Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, today is a little bit of a simpler video. I just wanted to talk about this latest Anduril update that's been released. I'm really excited about it. I think it's quite cool, so I thought it'd be fun to show it. Now, if you recall, in my D4 V2 review, I talked about how the linear driver in this light had some uh, pretty notable issues when it was actually trying to turn on in the lowest ramp levels. Um, some of the main issues that this driver suffered from were instability on the lowest levels, uh, sort of that slow turn on. And then because of that slow turn on, what would happen is you would press and hold, or at least I would press and hold, and then while I waited for the light to turn on, I would keep holding and it would ramp up. Um, so that's a little bit user error, but it was definitely still annoying. And then there just was not much granularity or detail at the lowest ramp levels, so you couldn't dial it in right where you wanted it. Uh, especially when you compared it to the lowest ramp levels on the FET plus one, it was a lot easier to get where you needed it to be. So of course, Hank is using the same, basically exactly the same linear driver in four different lights, the CARE4, the CARE1, the D4V2, and the DT8. Um, so they're basically the same driver. The difference is just how much current they're actually able to supply at the maximum regulated level. Now, very recently, Toykeeper released a really cool new update, which has been dubbed the PFM update for pulse frequency modulation, um, which really improves the usability of these ultra low levels on the linear Hank light drivers. So I'm really excited about this update because it makes this so much more usable than it was before at those lowest levels, which I really like my super ultra low levels. Now there are several updates that I'm referring to that, that improves this usability. Um, one of them is the PFM update, which is the biggest update. Um, but now there has also been a new jump start functionality, which really improves that slow turn on. Um, the ramp from moonlight can be disabled, which has kind of been overlooked, but it's a huge feature for me. And now the speed of the ramp is configurable. So that's four major changes that make a huge difference. A couple of those features are going to be found in all Android 2 builds, um, but the PFM stuff specifically is really just exclusive to these drivers. Um, so I don't know how it's going to affect other lights, but I do know how it affects these Hank lights at least. And another clarification too, this is specifically an Android 2 update. So if you're using Android 1 on one of these linear drivers and you want to try it out, you're going to be updating to Android 2, uh, which you should do because it's awesome. <laughs> now I have four lights here, a couple of D4V2s, this one is SST20 with the FET plus one driver. Uh, this is my E21A that has the five amp linear driver, of course. And then a couple of DT8s. This one's an Osram W2, and this is a Nishia 219B. Uh, now real quick, these DT8s were sent to me by Jackson Lee. I'm currently working on a review for these, and I'm really excited because these are awesome lights. Um, but for now, I'm just showing you the firmware update. As you can see here too, I do of course have the flashing kit. This is how you update the firmware. Now, um, there are four relevant builds um, that have been uploaded to the actual repository where you can download the latest uh, Android versions. Um, you want to make sure that you flash the right build onto your light. So if you're using either any light that is using the E21A emitters or the KR1 with any emitters, you want to make sure you flash the KR4 NoFET version of the firmware um, because you don't want those emitters to burn up with that FET control. Um, if you're using 219B LEDs, um, there's two builds, uh, KR4 219B and KR4, I believe it's just called 219. Um, the KR4 219B will give you like 50% FET control, so it'll give you a lot more power but not full power. And then I think the 219C is like 60%, um, so you want to make sure you flash those versions of the firmware. The DT8 can probably handle a little more with these 219Bs because it just has eight of them but I'm still just gonna flash the 219B. And then if you're using just any of the normal emitters, you wanna flash the KR4 version of the firmware, which will give you full FET control. So um, this one here is still using the old Android 1 build that the light shipped with. This is using the build that the light shipped with as well. It is Android 2, but it's not the PFM update. So it doesn't have any of the updates I'm gonna be discussing. And then both of these lights here have been updated to the latest August 31st release. So this is KR4 no FET and the KR4 build. So let's talk about the ramp precision. Um, so one of the issues with the linear driver was that on the lowest ramp levels, um, there was not a lot of granularity. So you started on to this low level and it just kind of skips. So there's not, if you, wanna, if you want it to be really low, but you want it to be a little brighter than that, but not that bright, then you're basically out of luck. <laughs> And if you remember, I did take measurements, so, and I actually measured this one too. 
on the first two levels, it's like, I think this one was like 0.7 lumens or something like that, or less. Uh, and then on level three, it was like a lumen and a half. Um, so that was just, that was just how it was. Those first two levels had the issues, and then level three was the stable level. However, um, with this newest update, there's been a lot more granularity added into there. So what was what was level three before the stable level is now level eleven, and we have all of this stuff in between then. So we have way more ability to dial in exactly what we want for those ultra low levels. So this is really really nice this makes this a lot more usable for me and i really appreciate this update now exactly how this is working uh, it's called pulse frequency modulation um and there's kind of a lot involved and it's going to be too much for this video so i'm just going to link the blf post down below and you can go read that if you want to know how exactly this is working um, but it's pretty cool stuff it will also affect the highest levels of the ramp as well it should reduce the noise produced by the FET. Um, so there's another update too beyond just this which is the ultra low levels now have a bit of a jump start so if you'll remember uh, one of the issues was that it was kind of slow turning on to the ultra low levels and you can see that here you see how it takes not too long like half a second or so to turn on at most um, but now what's been done is there's a little bit of a current uh, jump start if you will that'll help these to turn on just that little bit faster so it's still a bit of a delay, but if you care, uh, compare them directly, you can see this actually turns on. It's almost twice as fast now. And that is super cool. So now um, you, there won't be quite as long of a delay. It's, not, it's still not instant, and this is just what's going to happen when you're dealing with um, that linear regulator working at such a low level, but it is much faster than it was. So pretty cool. Um, as cool as that is, there's another update that's been pretty overlooked that makes a really big difference to me, and that is the ability to disable the ramp from moon on, um, or the ramp from moon activation. So one of the issues that I was having was I would turn the light on to the ultra low level, minimum ramp level, and I wouldn't see it turn on immediately, so I would keep holding and it would just start ramping up. And then there goes your night vision. So it would look like that. So you'll see it starts ramping before the LEDs even turn on, and that's largely due to that delay. So this was um, mostly user error, really, but it was rather annoying. So what has been added now is the ability to actually just full-on disable the ramp from moon activation. Now, this is not just exclusive to these linear Hank lights. I believe this is true for all of the new Android 2 updates. But if I press and hold, you can see it does not keep ramping and this is awesome i love this feature <laughs> um it's a small thing but it's it's really really nice for me now um the way to actually configure this is a little bit unintuitive um it's a little more complicated than some of the other options but you can get there so when you're on ramping you press and hold 10 h so press 10 times and then hold on the last click and you wait to the third menu option and then you click to enable this lock, if you will, and then you press and hold to disable it so that it behaves like it used to. So I'll show you that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. So this is the menu option. Press and hold to enable ramp from moon, which is the default behavior. I believe it's the default behavior. Now, if we press and hold, we will see that it'll start ramping. And what's interesting too, is because it has that faster start, you'll see the lights actually do turn on before it even starts ramping. So um, there you can see that jump start making a pretty big difference already. Um, but this will allow it to start ramping from moon activation, if that's what you prefer. If you want to disable it, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, hold one, two, three, and then you just click and that will tell it to turn on the little lock. So now it will not ramp. So kind of a small thing, really, really awesome update. I like that a lot. And now there is another update, uh, a fourth update that is relevant 
that I believe is also relevant to all new versions of Anduril, regardless of which lights you're using, and that is the change to the ramp speed. So, again, it's it jumps pretty quickly from those low levels up to the high levels. Um, and this is this is exacerbated somewhat by the fact that this light just it gets so bright. But um, the default ramp level is okay. I don't mind it, but uh, for me, I, even with this added granularity, I wish it was a little bit slower. So we now have the option to slow it down. So the way this works, it's a little bit complicated again. But essentially, what's happening here is the AT Tiny 1634 chip has a little timer that's running at like 60 hertz or so. And the way Toykeeper describes it is uh, there's basically each ramp level is assigned a frame, and then each frame is just one hertz. So as you're holding it, it'll go through all of those frames at about 60 hertz or so. Um, but now what you can do is you can slow it down so you can assign each frame uh, basically a cycle duration. So I, don't, I probably didn't describe that super well, um, but in practice, this is what it looks like. So this light here is the default ramping speed. This is the default ramping speed. So if you like the default ramping speed, and I think most people do, then it won't be an issue. But if you're like me, I like it to be a little bit slower. It's a little too quick for me. So we can configure that. Uh, we turn it on and we press seven times and hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it will be the third menu option. And now if we click three times, now this will be each brightness level will basically be three frames or it'll be three times or as slow or a third the speed. So now you can see how much slower that is. And this is again, really useful on these super low levels. You can dial that in right where you want it. And that is awesome. I really, really like this. Now, I, I don't run it on three. I actually have, I before this video, I had these set to two. So if I want to set this to two or half the normal cycle speed, uh, I turn it on to the ramping level and I hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold one, two, three. And then I just do two clicks. And now this will ramp at half the speed. So if we compare this to the non-ramp configurable DT8 here, so you can see that moonlight lock, and then you can see how much slower this one is here. Now that's reached the top of the ramp. So it's about literally half the speed as you'd expect. So. Um, those are just a few simple little updates, but they make a really big difference in the actual usability of these lights. And I'm really quite excited about these. Um, they really fix like basically all of the issues that I had with the lowest ramp levels. And now, um, these lights to me are way more usable, like in absolute darkness. So what I was experiencing before is like, if I was up in the middle of the night or something, I would be using this light here just because it was easier to dial in those lowest ramp levels i didn't have i didn't have the issues with it that i was having with the linear driver version um, but now with these updates this is like the perfect light for usage in just pitch black uh, whether you're indoors or outdoors but now you can turn it on you won't have to worry about blinding yourself because you're still holding the button like i do and then you can dial in exactly what you want and it'll still be very, very low. So that is a fantastic feature. Fantastic update. Uh, really happy about this. And anyway, um, I will link below the all of the relevant BLF posts again. I will also link the place where you can actually get the code. I guess I will also link these two lights here. And again, I'm gonna be I'm currently reviewing these. Um, so I'm gonna be uploading that video uh, next two or three weeks or so. We'll see. Um, so be on the lookout for that because that's going to be really exciting. And uh, sorry, this isn't the normal fancy video that I do, but I just really wanted to show this off. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, goodbye.